Hey friends, it's Matt with Bowls, and before we get started on today's game, I'd like to tell you a pretty inspiring story. This one time I was walking home from a friend's house, and across the street I saw my sister. So I, I called and I, I waved to her and I ran across the street, and then turns out it wasn't her. What, you didn't find that story inspiring? I guess maybe I have something to learn about inspiring others. Maybe I could learn something from a Anansi. Anansi is a competitive trick-taking card game based upon the West African myth of Anansi, a trickster spider who wanted to gather all of the world's stories in order to become the wisest of all. He eventually came to realize that true wisdom doesn't come from hoarding knowledge and instead decided to inspire others with his array of tales. The main goal of each player in Anansi is to earn the most points by the end of the third round. Points are earned at the end of each round based on how they've used their stories to inspire their followers. I know that doesn't really make any sense now, but it will by the end, I promise. At the start of each round, two story cards are drawn and placed in what's called the Trump Display, under their matching suit, either Leopard, Hornet, or Snake. The order of the cards in the Trump Display are random with each game. Whichever suit has the most cards stacked underneath it is considered to be the Trump suit. In case of a tie, it's the leftmost suit that will be the Trump suit. This will be important later. Once that's done, each player draws 8 to 10 story cards, depending on the number of players. The first player begins the trick by choosing a card from their hand and placing it face up in the middle of the table, which also determines the leading suit. Then, each player on their turn does one of two things either adds a card to the trick, or gains followers. When gaining followers, a player takes any card from their hand and places it sideways in front of them. Then, they draw uninspired follower cards based on the number of icons in the corner of the card that they played. These will be used later. Once each player has played a card, either to gain followers or adding to the trick, the trick is resolved. If a player played a trump card, the highest trump card played wins the trick. If no one played a trump card, whichever player played the highest leading suit wins. The winning player takes the trick and places it in front of them. This is a story that they now have. Make sure to keep all stories separate from one another. Once that's done, any player who played a card to gain followers adds the card that they played to the trump display under the appropriate suit. Remember that the trump suit is whichever suit has the most cards underneath. So this could potentially change the trump suit for the next trick. Then the next trick begins and that cycle repeats until players run out of cards and that's the end of the round. But here's the crux of the game. At any point during a round, a player can inspire their followers. The player takes one of their uninspired followers and a stack of story cards and stacks them together with the inspired follower side up. Each follower can only have one story, and each story can only inspire one follower. So it's a one-to-one -one thing. Once the round ends, the players earn points based on the balance of their inspired followers and their stories. If a player has any uninspired followers, they earn zero points that round. If a player has inspired all of their followers, but still has some leftover stories, they earn one point for each inspired follower. However, if a player has inspired all of their followers and has no stories left over, they score one point for each follower, but they also take a trickster bonus card. In the first round, they draw the two point card. In the second round, a four point card. And in the third and final round, the seven point card. So it's pretty important to get that balance right. Once all players have earned their points, the next round begins. After the third round ends, the game is over, and whichever player has the most points wins. The rulebook also offers some online resources for some additional ways to play, like solo play or two-player rules, as well as some alternate play styles. If I had one thing to say about Anansi, it's like a clock. There are a lot of parts in this game, and they all work so closely and are so interwoven, you really have to understand all of the parts to make any sense of the whole. I'll be honest, when I was first reading the rules of Anansi, I, I was kind of confused. I couldn't see how all the pieces fit together. But once I sat down and played around, 
it immediately all made sense, and I understood the sort of beautiful simplicity of the game. Then, once I understood the mechanics that seemed so straightforward on the surface, I realized it takes a ton of planning and careful execution within each round to maintain that balance between gaining followers and being able to win enough tricks, but making sure never to do too much of either. I mean, winning too many tricks is bad. There's a ton of depth to Anamzi, and I think it'll inspire even the most hardcore of gamers. So if all of that sounds interesting, please go check out Anansi, and if you like this video, please click that like button and subscribe for more tabletop gaming news. Again, this is Matt with Bowls. Thanks for watching. Bye. Click to subscribe. Check out more videos. And thanks for watching.